Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Welcome to the show. This is the second installment on the five-part series on the lie of aging. Now, in our first part, I gave you an intro, gave you a background on the lie of aging. And I spoke to you about the five components of aging. The five components of aging are genetics, stress, nutrition, exercise, and health care. Now, again, genetic, stress, nutrition, exercise, and health care, five components of aging. And I told you that four of those components are 100% controllable. The first one, genetics, isn't. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your parents. But four of those are 100% controllable. They're your responsibility, your fault. But we're not covering all aspects that we attribute to age. In other words, the superficial things, the gray hair, the age spots, the fact that our nose continues to grow, therefore it gets longer or whatever. I, I, don't, I don't care about that. What I really am concerned with is, as I said in the podcast number 12, you know, the clients that come in and tell me, Garrett, gosh, man, if I could, if I could just do those things back in my good old days... And I'm careful, always careful putting a number with that because that could be age or that year of being incredibly fit or incredibly able is different for everybody. They can be in their 20s, they could be in their teens, it could be in their 30s, doesn't matter. I have clients say that to me all the time, boy, if I could just do that, then they would not have aged. They would not have done what we call aging, which we use aging to describe deteriorating. Well, that's ability. Being able to do those things, that's ability. That's not aging. That's that's ability. And that's what we're talking about. That's what everybody's afraid of. They're afraid of aging because they're afraid of deteriorating. They're afraid of losing ability. Well, there's four components of ability. Activity, nutrition, lifestyle, and the most important, if you get this last one wrong, forget about the other three. The fourth one is mindset. Activity, nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset. Today, what we're talking about, activity. And I'll tell you, if you didn't hear the whole intro to this, you can go back and listen to podcast number 12 which is on the introduction of this series. If you haven't heard it, I'd highly encourage you to go back and listen to it to give you kind of a background on what direction we're headed here because this is the first component we're going to delve in today, like I say, is activity. Now, I'm going to start off talking about some athletes. Now, three athletes, I actually use this in a presentation. There's three athletes are Ashton Eaton, Lindsey Vaughn and Floyd Mayweather. Now, Pablo, you probably know who Ashley Vaughn is, right? Uh, yeah, the skier. Yeah, skier, down skier, okay. And Floyd Mayweather, a boxer. Rather good, I would say. You wouldn't He's say. had a little bit of success, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'd won one or two bouts, I'm sure, sure so sure. definitely so. And uh, Ashton Eaton, do you know that one? I do not know Ashton Eaton. Okay, I picked this one out because Ashton Eaton won the greatest athlete in the world, which is the the decathlete. He won the last gold oh, medal gotcha. in the Olympics. So Jim Thorpe had that same title. So I picked him. That You would say these individuals are in pretty good shape. Wouldn't you? That's, that's awesome because I would have thought after that 70s show, he would have been really out of shape. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Wrong Ashton. Just slightly different. Slightly yeah. different. So possibly a different pay scale too. So, But yeah, Ashton Eaton, Lindsey Vaughn, and Floyd Mayweather. And the reason I bring these three up, I always ask everybody, what, what do you think you might have in common with these three individuals? And what you have in common with these three individuals is that if I were to take just a sample of a muscle on you, let's say your, your, your quadricep muscle, that big old thigh muscle. And if I were to measure and take it from the exact same spot on you that I take it from each one of these three athletes. And I took that little cross section of the muscle and I put it under a microscope. What I would find is I would find they were basically identical. And especially they're identical in their propensity to grow and die, or as we say, grow in hypertrophy. But the reason that's important is that it's been proven over and over again that we can regrow muscle at any age. And despite what you may have heard, not only can we regrow muscle at any age, we can grow it at the same rate. There are a lot of articles out there that would seem to disagree with me on that. But if you delve deep into their studies, especially if they're not observational studies, as time passes on the calendar, supposedly we don't grow muscle as fast or we don't lose fat as fast. And that's not true at all. There are several other components that are involved in that that have nothing to do with time passes on the calendar. It's just things we do to ourselves. Back to what I was saying about these three athletes, the same potential you have, that doesn't change. That doesn't change whatever your number is. It enhances to a certain point as we grow, and then it stays that that same way unless we do something to change that. That's been proven over and over again. The person who proved it, yes, you listen to my podcast, you know this is my hero in the field. 
He's the whole reason that we have a fitness industry. It's Dr. Kenneth Cooper. He started the studies on aging back in 1969. That study's still going on to this day. And he's proven at age 60, at age 70, 80, 90, and into the hundreds, he's proven how people can regrow muscle at any age. And that last study that I'm referencing actually was done back in 19... I was speaking about it in 1999. So it had to be 96, 97 that study was actually put out. So this is years later. I mean, we've known this. We've known this for a long time. So there's no reason that you have to lose strength because time passing on the calendar has nothing to do with that whatsoever. And if you don't want to believe him, you can believe some of the top exercise physiologists in the world, William McCardle and Frank and Victor Ketch. And they stated in a study, inactivity results in loss of muscle. And loss of muscle, not aging. Not aging is the primary cause of creeping obesity. We believe that our metabolism slows down as we get older. I address that in the Metabolism Podcast. If you want to hear more about that, you can check that out. You want to get deeper into this subject. But basically, we, our metabolism doesn't slow because time passes on the calendar. It has nothing to do with that. If you if you believe that to be true or you have a health professional that knows that that's true, please have them call me and tell me the exact age it happens to everybody. And I bet you money that individual will tell you, well, it depends on a lot of things. Well, if it depends on a lot of things, it doesn't happen because time passes on the calendar. It happens because of other things, these other things that I'm talking about. So that's what they're saying here. Inactivity results in loss of muscle and loss of muscle, not time passing on the calendar, not aging, is the primary cause of creeping obesity. Get this second part of that quote. The muscle that remains as metabolically active as ever. Hey, it wasn't just Garrett that said that. There's actually some people that do some studies, what have you. There's actually some practicing exercise physiologists that seem to agree, and most all of them do. So obviously... It's easy enough to look around and see people of age, people where time has passed on a calendar on them. They have more years on the calendar than maybe you do. And you're looking at them going, Gary, maybe I can suspend my belief system here a little bit and believing that people do deteriorate as time passes on the calendar. And I'll go down this road with you. But I look around and I see all these people that have passed a certain age and they seem to be feeble. They seem to be not operating as well as they used to, or they're not as athletic, or we don't see them in the NFL, whatever. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. Our activity changes. As much as we want to think that it doesn't, as much as we want to think we're as active in our 30s as we are in our teens or 20s, or I'm even more active because everything's harder and it's so much harder, we're not. I guarantee you we're not. I'm going to show you some simple examples of what I'm talking about. Think about, I'm not sure what age you are, but when was the last time you tried to balance on a curb? Then you just walk into a friend's house and you get up on a curb and you start trying to balance and hold yourself in that. When was the last time you played the old, don't step on a crack or you'll break your mama's back? When was the last time you played tag with somebody, hopscotch? Maybe an activity like soccer. Maybe you play that now. The reason I bring these activities up, these are things that we do when we are younger. Not because we're younger, but when we're younger. We do these activities, and these are things that we stop doing as time passes on the calendar. Not because time passes on the calendar, we just stop doing it. Most likely, when you were a senior in high school, you'd kind of given up on tag. You know, by the time you hit 5th, 6th, 7th grade, hopscotch wasn't cool anymore. You know, you stop doing these things. It begins that early. As we get into our 20s, we move on to either jobs or we would move on to the military. Or we move on to college. Even more of these activities drop. Regular sports, unless you continue on with sports in either the varsity, JV capacity in college or in intramurals. If you don't do that, well, then that's another thing that we've stopped doing. We stop challenging ourselves. We stop challenging certain muscle groups. And one of the things, this is just one small example. One of the things we stop doing is we stop moving laterally. Now, I talked about this in the balance episode, and I highly recommend you go back and listen to that. But we stop moving laterally, but stop moving side to side. And what's that got to do with anything? Well, simple. You have muscles that control that movement. You have muscles around the hips that control that movement. And not only do we stop moving laterally, even in our exercise, not until 2014 did a cardio piece end up on fitness center floors. A cardio piece ended up on fitness center floors that did lateral movement. Unless, I mean, abductor, adductor machines, the hip rotation machines, there were some resistance pieces that addressed it, whether people did them or not, but there was not a cardio piece that did any lateral movement. All of them were forward and backward. Think about it. Treadmills, forward and backward. A recumbent bike or an upright bike, forward, backward. Elliptical, forward, backward. Ski machines, forward, backward. Not until the Lateral X came out by Octane and some of the other companies that put out lateral movement machines did we move sideways. Why is that important? Well, as we don't move sideways, the muscles around our hips tend to deteriorate. I almost see if Pablo will play along here. We have not practiced this. In fact, he doesn't know that I'm pulling this on him. I'm going to ask you something. I'll see if you can finish this now okay. for me, okay? Let's go. At 17, you fall and get a bruise. Right. But at 71, you fall and break a 
Break your hip. Bingo. See, you didn't even know I was going to say it. That's your first thought. We're going to break a hip. Why? Well, it's because these muscles that I'm talking about, these muscles around the hip that control lateral movement, we stop using them. They deteriorate. Therefore, it leaves our hip vulnerable. Therefore, when we fall at 71, we break a hip. We think that's because time passed on the calendar, and it's not. It has everything to do with activity, strictly activity. And these are the examples of what I'm talking about. Let me give you another one. There's thousands. As many body parts there are, there are examples. But believe it or not, do you know that the majority of the world does not sit down and stand up correctly? (laughs) I kid you not. And if you don't believe me, the next time you're in a meeting or you're in a restaurant, watch everybody when they go to stand up. I've had people fall out laughing after hearing this and doing this exact thing. But watch them go to stand up. Almost every single person, when they go to stand up, will pull their feet backwards. And I don't mean out of a reclining position. I mean the feet are flat on the floor. And as they go to stand up, they'll pull their feet behind them. What's happening here is that they're actually putting pressure on their knees when they stand up. It's undue pressure. We stand up wrong. And if you do that over and over and over, keep putting what we call a quad dominant squat, pulling your feet underneath you, Leaning forward, standing up, pushing that shearing effect on your knee, pushing pressure against your knee. Basically, it's like the pressure that's going against your knee is just like me pushing really hard against a sheetrock wall. If I can push hard enough, I'm going to poke a hole in it. Well, you're doing a little bit of that against your knee every single time you stand up for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And then what happens? Well, you get a knee replacement. We don't have knee replacements in our 20s unless we have some kind of Horrible injury. But we do have them one time passed on the calendar, and a lot of people think that, of course, that's because you're older. No, it's because our activity has changed, and we're actually doing the damage ourselves. I said that the activity had changed. Well, that must mean that at some point in time we did it right. Exactly. Watch a toddler squat down to pick up something. A toddler has not learned that socially it's not really good, it's not accepted, to push your butt out behind you. (laughs) We just we kind of avoid doing that once we put the three-piece suit on. But they don't know that that's not socially acceptable. All they know is that they've got to counterbalance this body as it goes down. They want to use the biggest muscles to do it. We are born knowing how to do that. So they'll push their rear end backwards and they'll squat all the way down to where they cannot go any further. And their rear end will basically touch their ankles. They won't think twice about doing it. We lose that. We stop doing that. And we stop doing that because now we don't think it's socially acceptable to go into this position. And this is what causes deterioration, not only in the knees, but also in the hips. We're not working the glutes on a daily basis like we used to. Oh, we may do 30 minutes two or three times a week at a fitness center, but we're not doing it on a daily, hourly basis like we used to. Which is why you can take a gentleman past a certain age, and it looks like, as Jeff Foxworthy said, that you took a frog and stood him up and put on a pair of double knit slacks on him. Because they have the condition, one of my clients pointed out, is no butt at all. <laughs> and what I'm saying there is that they have no rear end whatsoever. We call it no butt at all. And it's because of the way they sit down. Two ways that we progressively change our activity level, but also the activities that we do that cause us to look feeble, that cause us to move slower as time passes on a calendar. And I'll show you something interesting. Back when I was talking about studies that were done on muscle growth, one of my favorite studies that ever done in health and fitness is Dr. Cooper's, uh, what I call the nursing home study. I'm not sure if they reference it that way, but it's a nursing home study. They took 400 participants. They took them through 11 traditional exercises. And every two weeks, they adjusted the resistance. Now, this study went on for six months. The subject saw an average muscle gain of 50%. If you would like to have... 50% muscle gain, please raise your hand. And if you could see me in the podcast, I have my hand up. And if you don't want yours, I'll take it. (laughs) The interesting thing about that, 50% muscle gain. After just six months of exercise, the average age of the people in that study was 70 years old. That's not the most amazing fact of this. Most amazing fact is that study is over 30 years old. We change our activity level because of our lifestyle, and because of that, that's what causes us to deteriorate, not time passing on a calendar. It's just the fact that we all do it. It's the fact that we all do it that we think it's normal. It's not. We're doing it to ourselves. Another thing about activity is the three things that we measure as personal trainers, and that is when we're working on an exercise or working on somebody with an exercise and we're trying to make changes, we've got to change one of three things if we're going to make improvements. Now, if we're going to stay the same, we can pretty well keep with the same exercise, the same weight, same everything, and we don't have change. We can actually hold somebody at that point. We're not telling their muscles to change at all. But if not, if we want to grow, if we want to make a change, or if we want to go backwards for some strange reason, you've got to change one of three things, frequency, intensity, or time. That's exercise physiology 101. We all know that. 
frequency, how often you do the exercise, intensity, faster or, or heavier weights, and time, either reps or how long you do it for a matter of time or how many days a week you do that. Well, as time passes on the calendar, we change this. It's not automatically happening. We change this. We change frequency, intensity, and time. I'll guarantee you we do. If you think that you're as active as you were when you were in high school or elementary school, I guarantee you you're not. Maybe busier. May have more stress. I would think by now you have a lot more responsibilities, that's for sure. But active? No, definitely not. The average person is not anywhere near as active as they were. And it's not just because of sports. It's because of all the activity you did on a daily basis being kids, being younger. Fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Our lives change. There's many more responsibilities on us. That's all understandable. But believing that it happens automatically is what's dangerous. That's my whole point. Now, I did the thing about the sitting down, how that controls your hips and your knees. I also talked about lateral movement and how that deteriorates your hips. That goes with shoulders. You know, how many times you throw a ball? How many times you had to make your bed? How many times you had to mow the lawn? Whatever. Every single body part is affected. And again, like I say, this is not because time passed on the calendar. It's because we're doing it ourselves. There's other components to this besides just the fitness level. And we get into those because you'll see where nutrition and lifestyle is affected by this. And of course, the most important, I can't say it enough, the most important, of course, is mindset. If you have that one wrong, you can forget the others. I mentioned Dr. Catch. I spoke about three different exercise physiologists, William McCardle, Frank Catch, and Victor Catch. And the inactivity results in loss of muscle it has nothing to do with aging. It has to do with activity. Dr. Cooper has a similar quote. If you look at body fat, it seems to increase with age, even though your weight does not. That is not a physiological fact of aging. It's an adaptive effect of aging. This is something we don't talk about enough. We don't talk about the adaptive things that we do. We don't realize them. It's like watching grass grow. Your life is changing. Your demands on you are changing. Your responsibilities are changing. Therefore, your activity level changes. The great news about this, here's the good news. I've been telling you a lot of depressing things, I'm sure. But I have good news that goes along with all this. And one of the best things about all this is it's your fault. It's your responsibility. And I think that's great because then you have control of it. But the best news about all of this is unless you have some debilitating injury, if you're missing a right shoulder, I'm going to have a very difficult time rehabbing that right shoulder. But if you don't have a debilitating injury, you can get all of it back. Every bit of it. In fact, you're going to love this. There is more science to prove what I'm saying than prove me wrong. The majority of what everybody believes about ability and aging, there's more science behind what I'm saying than what we all inherently believe. There is more science that can prove that I can take Michael Jordan, and if he hasn't had any debilitating injury that I don't know about, and we can make him as strong, fast, most likely as good a basketball player as he ever was right now. <laughs> that may blow your mind, but the research is there. It's really not that difficult. We would do it the same way he did it the first time he learned. When you were growing up, you developed a lifestyle of activity, and it increased. You kept getting more and more. I'll show you what I mean. You went from crawling to standing to walking, and you were heavily encouraged. Well, those are lifestyle changes. If you can't crawl, you can't be mobile, you can't get to food, you can't get in trouble, you can't whatever. That's a certain lifestyle. When you get to where you're standing and you're walking, that lifestyle changes too. When you get to driving a car, that lifestyle changes too. Well, those are little lifestyle changes. And then we did a lifestyle change of actually running, being able to run, being able to play in sports. Each one of these developed, they grew. One added on top of the other, and you start to develop the body. What happens and what we don't pay attention to is we get to an apex. We get to a climax of ability, I say. And that may be, if you were an athlete, that was when you were the star, your best athletic moment. Maybe not an athlete, maybe just generally active. But you hit your apex, and then you start to change your lifestyle. You start to go backwards. You start to do less things. Therefore, those muscles start to atrophy. And that's what ends up causing this deterioration. That's the first part of this is activity. It's one I could talk about for days. Obviously, I'm a personal trainer. I see this all the time. I've got clients that come in, and they're trying to fight the aging process. And I talked about in the podcast number 12, where that's one of the negative things we talk about, fighting aging. Then they quickly realize that after a while, they're not fighting anything because they've gotten to their level of wellness. They've gotten their strength back. They've been able to make all kinds of changes. And the funny phenomenon, since we our average tenure of a client here is eight years, you ask one of my trainers that has been working with a particular client for 
four, five, six, seven, eight, 22 years, whatever it is. And you ask them how old that client is, and they, they see them every single week, two to three times a week. A lot of times they can give you a range, but they can't tell you exactly. And you would think there's something wrong with that. I understand that. The reason being is that we don't train them towards their age. There's no such thing. We train them towards their ability. And I've got people in their 80s. They're as able, if not more able, than people in their 30s. And it's not because of some genetic, strange phenomenon. It's solely because of their activity level and the other three components that I'm going to get into in our next podcast. I'm going to get into the next one, which is nutrition. Stay tuned with me. Keep up with this series. This is extremely important. It only concerns your life. And I want you to come back with us in our next show where I'm going to talk about the next component, which is nutrition, following that one up with lifestyle, and then, of course, the most important aspect of ability, mindset. I'm Garrett Williamson, reminding you to stay hydrated and seek your level of wellness. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251 251- 278 Edge or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at personaledgefitness.com.